Welcome back, Avernites, to more Avernum Crystal Souls. All right, we did some things in uh, Fort Draco here. Oh, we are still looking for an hourglass. I don't know how important it is that we try to find one right away. Do you all see an hourglass anywhere? Where would one keep an hourglass? Okay, actually turns out we will find an hourglass when we need one anyway, so I won't waste any more time looking for one. But if we find one, so be it. Bats! Remember when bats were hard? Well, they're hard again. I'm hard! Wait! <laughs> oh, damn it, Lug Lug, you can't be missing in this game. Improved spells too. At least Trog's bringing the pain. Here we are at the Gunston Homestead. This was renamed. I believe it was Tor's homestead in the last version. Oh, you like bags of meal. Some herby herbs over here. Gonna probably go a little slower than I did in the last Avernum to try to not have, try to make sure I find everything so we're not doing as much backtracking. Although we may need to, anyways, just based on not being able to open certain doors, open certain chests. Uh, read certain books kind of made you go back to previously explored areas either way this is the central compound of a large farm pens for amler and amlers are to the east a farmhouse is to the west and a tunnel leads into the cave wall to the northeast most of avernum's food comes from small farms like these mushrooms lizard meat and cave cow milk provide the bulk of avernite diet the stone wall is thick and carefully maintained and the residents are all armed Raids of Nephilim and Empire soldiers are rare, but they do happen. So in this one, we have this new threat. We have the Empire down here. Causing a ruckus. It's 
talk to sexy Jasmine. This radiant red-headed woman, maybe in her very early 20s, is running various farm errands. She has many small scars on her hands and arms. They show up well against the translucent white skin. She greets you with a warm smile. Welcome. The soul of Avernum is always welcome here. My name's Jasmine. What are you doing? Nicholas and I work for Tor and Carol. It's their farm. I watch the livestock and he works the mushrooms. So that's interesting. This was called Tor's Homestead in the uh, last rendition of Avernum. Uh, or should I say Avernum First Edition after it was renamed from Exile. But now they, for some reason, have renamed it Gunston Homestead, which I'm assuming is their last name. Or I could just be completely fucking off. Tell me more about Nicholas. He and I are engaged to be wed. Darn it! Nicholas looks after the mushroom patches. There's a bunch of them to the south. Growing mushrooms is a lot of work down here, even though there's no weeds. The livestock doesn't seem friendly. She looks at the scars on her hands. It's sad work. The cows are always sickly and miserable, but they're better than those lizards. Those monsters will take your hand off if you let them. But where else can we get meat? What do you think of this farm? This is the biggest homestead around here. Tor and Carol look after the other farms, organize defenses, that sort of thing. Nicholas and I just work for them. They're good people. They've just been under a lot of strain because of the salamanders. What salamanders? They're down in the larder, and they're dangerous. We can't get them out. You should talk to Tor about it. Those scars are painful. Yes. It comes from raising giant lizards. I used to feel sad about them, but I've come to realize that scarred or not, I look just fine. She grins. You're quite right. She blushes. The pink shows up sharply against her pale, pale skin. You're sweet to say so, but I'm taken, soldier, just so you know. Ah! I need rations. Talk to Tor. He's in the kitchen. What are you doing? What do you think of this farm? Never mind. I asked that already. What are you doing? Never mind. All right, that's all we're getting out of Jasmine. Jasmine is cutie. Hello, lizard. I love letting the animals out. You meet the pale, harried young man. He carries a basket of mushrooms. You greet him. He nods, not setting down the mushrooms. I'm Nicholas of Kocha. You said that you're from Kocha? Indeed, Jasmine and I are from Kocha. Well, south of here, ever been? It's one of the six cities, sort of out of the way, but a good place. Why'd you leave Kocha? The Empire raids were getting closer and closer. What could I do? I'm just a farmer. I decided to farm where the invaders wouldn't destroy my work. Nicholas trades gossip with you, but he's too distracted. He's eager to get back to work, but he's too polite just to walk away. Working hard? Yes, and look after the motion pastures. I bet you think it's easy, not like soldiers work. A lot of people have harder lives than you do. He picks up the mushrooms. Well, I didn't say they did it. It's not a competition. My life is tough enough. And the Empire is going to murder us all anyways. Good day. He walks off like a little bitch. Hey, there's an hourglass. If we want to steal one. I think you used to be able to close the doors on the other games, but... I guess you can't anymore. Ah, well, 
just straight up tells you. You just can't steal unless you can get out of sight. And you gotta get all four of these motherfuckers out of sight. I'm really trying to rob this motherfucker. The page of this tome are covered with arcane symbols. Oddly, they're not magical inscriptions. However, one word keeps coming up when you read them. Algebra. What an odd area of study. Algebra sounds boring. A dour, exhausted man sits at the end of the table, sipping tea and lost in thought. A heavy blade hangs at his side. When you approach, he nods at you. Always good to see a soldier here. My name's Tor. I served in Fort Avenue. Welcome to Gunston Homestead. Is this your homestead? Aye, it is. My wife and I settled here a few years back. Do what we can to help. Who's your wifey? Carol. She's the healer of these parts. How do you help the other farmers? Well, you see, I was a soldier. I had the know-how, so I was natural to help the other farmers organize when the Nephilim attack started. Haven't done it much lately, though, because of those damn salamanders. Tell me about your salamander problems. He shakes his head. Not long ago, a mated pair of salamanders broke in here. We tried to drive them out, but they hid in our larder. And we can't get them out. They're eating our stores. Kill them, and I'll reward you best I can. He points to the northeast. The larder is down there. Be careful. They're vicious. What'd you do as a soldier? I was the quartermaster. I negotiated and partnered for supplies with people from all over. Listen to stories about the caves. Between that and my travels, I can tell you a lot about the caves of Avenum. Can you teach me what you've learned? Not now. I'm too busy keeping my farm running. It's the salamanders in the pantry. Just too much trouble. Do you know what these algebra books are about? Those books are Carol's. Don't know nothing about them. We each have our own work. Can I buy provisions? Oh, yeah, wow, you got fruit? Cool. You say you served Fort Avernum? Aye, it's where all the humans banished Avernum by the Empire arrived. I gave weapons and stuff to the new arrivals. Everyone who arrived from the surface world went by me. I gave him a knife, food, and directions. Without my stuff, nobody would have lived long. Of course, the Empire stopped sending people down. Fort Avernum shut down, and I left the army. Oh, well, what can you do? Yeah, we remember Tor. He's the one that gave our parents all their equipment. What is that Fort Avernum now? Nothing. Rubble, abandoned after the Empire invaded. They stopped sending people to Avernum, of course. So no reason to keep the fort. I can't say that it makes me sad. No one knew we'll be trapped down here. That's because they don't want any more competition. Alright, so we have the quest to kill these salamanders down here. I don't think this guy's ever gonna fucking leave. They want you to close doors because then you'd, you'd lock fucking people out. Anyways, not worth fucking around anymore. You meet a tall, striking woman with... Woman with short, dark hair. The apothecary in which where she tends to injured farmers and travelers. Well, this is the apothecary. As she walks around her humble clinic, she speaks with you and grinds something up with a mortar and pestle. 
Welcome, brave soldiers of Avenum. I'm Kel of the Hammer Clan. Welcome to our humble household. I looked at some of your books. Do you know anything about algebra? Oh, that. It's a new thing called mathematics. It's recently become an interest of mine. Great fun, really. It takes a few years to truly master. Someone in Avenum has to think of those things. Why? We need to keep up with learning on the surface. It might help us defend against them. What are you doing? My husband and I look after the farm and the other farms around here. We raise livestock and some mushrooms. I'm also a healer. I can help you if you'd like. Can you make potions? Sadly, no. I can make simple poultices, but I can't create the condensed magical healing a warrior like you requires. Take your precious herbs to Formello, to the southeast. The alchemist there can give help to who you need. I can use the help of a healer. Just kidding. Who's your husband? Tor. We run this farm together. It's been a lot of work because of the salamanders. Salamanders? I'm going to kill them. Yes, two nasty salamanders stuck in here on a hold up in our larder. Talk to Tor about it. He'll tell you what happened. We're here to kick some salamanders in the dick. And then the JJ. The passage slopes down steeply to the east. The air is stuffy, moist. Moist. So moist. Don't you love the word moist? And reeks of sulfur. It is unnaturally warm and you think you hear hissing. Someone locked my ex-girlfriend down here? Hello, knock knock. Oh shit! Caught me off guard. Oh, then they fire in front of them? Oh, shit. That's a problem. Not super strong, so as long as we can keep everyone up here. Salamander almost burned off my dick! A bag of coal. Do we need a bag of coal? Nope. We need bags of meal and fucking bags of sugar, apparently. By the way, I forgot to put on my woven silver band. Plus one quick action. Thank you! Quick 
quick action, if you recall. Helps you act more quickly in combat. In addition, each level makes fatigues from your battle disciplines fade 5% faster. Apparently, they nerfed dual wielding on this. The cap for um, successfully hitting became 95% in the first game, and they dumbed it down to 90%. So you see it gives a 35% hit and damage penalty. And you can reduce that by 2 per level. Which means you can get it down to, what, isn't that 20? If we bring that to, up to 10, that means there's still a 15% damage penalty. Oh, hit and damage penalty. Yeah, so anyways, they nerfed that. I'm not sure exactly what the calculations are, but from what I read, it was it went from 95 to 90%. So I don't know. Don't argue with me. I just do what I'm told. We're still going to do dual wielding. Fuck it. I took care of those salamanders that have been bothering you. You tell Thor that the larder is free of pest. Thanks for your help. I got something for you. The Gunston household remembers those who help us. He disappears into the next room and returns with a delicate necklace for you. From my soldier days, it's wasted here. Wear it proudly. This will turn many a blow away. I don't know if I want to turn many a blow away. I like being blown. All right, got a little bit of reputation. Let's go see if Carol wants to hook up. No, she's she's still taking. What about Jasmine? She want to hook up? No. Okay. We got the gymnastics now. Let's quickly review gymnastics. That uh, makes us far lighter on our feet. Each skill level gives us 2% chance of evading enemy attacks and 10% chance of starting combat rounds with a bonus action points. Gymnastics is dope. We like gymnastics, and we're about to hit level three, which is also totally tactacular. That's all we have to do here on the uh, the Gunston Homestead. Need any more help with anything? Not that I can think of. What are the Nephilim up to? They haven't given us a moment's peace since they built the fort to the north. I can't stand those Nephilim bastards. Can you teach me anything of what you learned? He says, uh, I was the quartermaster. I negotiated and bartered for supplies with people from all over. Listen to the stories of the caves. Between that and my travels, I can tell you a lot about the caves of Avril. So he can start teaching us cave lore when we can afford it. So it's good to note that Tor can teach us some cave lore. I'm not sure how it works, but I think a lot of the cave uh, lore locations, the secret caches, are actually the same as in the first game. I saw some complaints about that, but I think I will try to hold out for as long as possible and then do, again, just do a compilation video where we go and find as many caches as possible. I believe... Uh, there's, I have a list around of 40 plus to 48, something like that. I was thinking about doing that. We're just doing it as we go. Um, I don't know. Tell me what you all think. Did you like one video of having it all shown at once? I thought that was, that was cool because that's a little bit easier for people to see if they found them or not at this point. Or at any point. I think that's the only video where I showed Stephen Jennings anything before he did it on his own. All right, so note to self, cave lore at the Tor Homestead. Now let's get into some Nephilim. Let's just get into some Nephilim. It's the hidden cave. Of goblins and Nephilim. Yeah. 
we will probably run out and uh, get our MP back after this battle. Or I guess we can just kind of clear this area and then get our MP back. This is a Nephilim graveyard. Burial mounds for the deceased Nephilim warriors ring the room. From the size and intricacy of the totem carvings, you can guess that this is where the stronger and more respected deceased end up. And of course, also giant spiders. group heal we should uh, go ahead and start spreading these out they may save our life one day Small hellhounds, that's good. I really didn't want to, to face a large hellhound at this point. Holy shit! Where the fuck did he come from? This somewhat gnawed human body. It was probably thrown to the Hellhounds as food, yet another reason to dislike this tribe of Nephilim. Doing the leather pants dance! the fucking super light now. Another somewhat gnawed body. Little miniature treasure room. Suddenly, for a moment, an electric feeling fills the room. Your hair stands on end. Nephilim zombies and skeletons slowly crawl out of the burial, burial mounds. They slowly shamble towards you. Their shamans must have prepared this special trap for intruders. Oh, well, we all leveled, so we're good. We're here to fuck skeletons up. Uh, 
We got hasted and wasted. Drop the bitches. Some nimble sandals, okay. Make me all nimbly bimbly. Go ahead and give them to our lady friend here. Encumbers mages. All right. So mages can't wear those, or we shouldn't wear those. I'm going to give those fancy little shoes to Miss Clot there. Give her a little dex bonus. This box contains inedible rations and foul goblin clothing. Nothing of value. Huh? Oh shit. It's Snurg! When you get close to the portcullis, you see that it is crude writing scratched on the surface. It's in a crude Nephilim dialect. You can tell that it is a question, but you aren't sure what it's asking. Snurg! There's a brief quiet pause and the room gets very cold, and then something has joined you in the chamber. You suspect that your answer was incorrect. I don't give a fuck, I'll kill that too! Maybe not. Oh shit. Well, I think we need the right answer. <laughs> Science says you can't understand the markings, so you try to guess what they mean. Don't dare to spoil these graves, or a nasty curse will fall on you, etc. Well, I didn't despoil them. So yeah, this is uh, this is definitely a different version than the first Avernum because I actually have a walkthrough of the first Avernum game, and this is different. Looking for white webs that I may have. Missed. Just looking for the code word.
Fang Clan. Okay. It didn't pop up this time. Do we not need it? Oh, this is uh, for these rune these runes that I'm stepping on. We just want to make sure we don't step on those. Okay. Maybe we can get the password from Snurg here. Shaman Durfel. Oh, we got a couple little name bastards down here, do we? Down on this little fucking shaman. That's the shit I'm talking about. The wheel is a broken, rusty chain wrapped around it. You try to turn the wheel only to find that it's broken. Nobody's used this shit for anything in a while. Is it broken, though? It's like a back entrance into the fortress. Let's try Gath. There's a brief quiet pause and then the rusty gate opens. A long angry squeal echoes down the corridors and the, and the way ahead is clear. Don't ask me where I, I got that. It was just a lucky fourth guess. Hey, got some XP out of it though. It's time to fucking level, baby. We need that strength. I want to I'm just going to pump up hardiness and melee for now because I want to try to I want to speed my way towards having um adrenaline. I'm not going to worry about putting money into that. I'm just going to speed my way toward that shit.
We're obviously going to need some arcane lore and some resistances. But we're also going to want to buff up the beefiness of our spells. So for now, let's just keep pumping that up. Here we are, folks. Level 3. Already got a decent little amount to get into level 4. Level cap is 50. I don't think we're going to get there, but... Let's go regen, shall we? Goblins down here in these caves. Got a goblin shaman coming up here from the, the rear. Oh, he's fucked. Got some spear chuckers coming. Get him, Runstock. Shank that motherfucker. <laughs> Ooh, you missed. Yeah, no quest for rail. Sorry, folks. I don't see shit. What the fuck are we? Oh, back here? What the fuck? Get the fuck out of here. Loader, are you going? Iron short sword. I like meat and fish. Meat, meat and fish, fish. My sword don't ever miss, miss. Fairly large little area here. That's not an oxymoron. Nasty. Speed potions, well, let's definitely, let's divvy those to our fighters. You know, throw some, some fucking. We'll collect lamps and stuff. Lamps help us see gooder.
See, they didn't echelon this game. In echelon, you needed fucking light sources. This game, you can you can go the whole game without a light source. Which can be annoying, I guess, but the realism is definitely... It's with the light sourcing. In this game, it just makes shit super bright, which actually helps to see some of these little buttons, but... Um, bottom line is, is that light sources in this game not nearly as important as they were in Echelon. Also, beat all three Echelon games in the same time it took me to beat Avernum 1. Just saying. Iron Shield. Alright, we upgraded to the Iron Shield. We got our first energy potion. We definitely want to make use of those as far as hoarding them until I have a shitload. Alright, here come the big Nephilims. The Nephils. These guys could be a problem. Luckily we have good magic. Apparently our fighters are not bringing their A-game. I did read from several forums that the best party you can have in Avernum 2 is made of entirely casters. But I want to beat all six of these with the same party. I kind of dedicated myself to it at this point. So we're going to take this same four heroes and be all six albums with the same motherfuckers but of course it's this descendants the descendants of the descendants and the descendants of the descendants of the descendants so eventually we'll be six generations down lug lug the sixth Shit, here come the Nephilim. Here they come. Here come the pussy cats. Missing is not an option. Whoa! Just fucking big gringo goblin. and stuff. Not that we really did much of stuff like this. But sticking with the theme, we... Oh, we already... Okay, we'll upgrade his bow there. We'll eventually give Trog some bow and, and Lug Lug some throwing. Not much. Just enough to pretend they're okay at it. Money, money, money. I love picking up money. In any form. recruited a lot of goblin friends. Easy there. I don't know if we want to run into that room quite yet. Looks like a big mess hall. Oh shit. You done fucked up.
like a wedding feast. That kind of shit. Ronstock have shit tons more MP than Porth Clot. This doesn't seem fair. It's a big fucking area. I think we'll just keep fighting until we gotta go recharge. Problem is, is she's our healer, so. She goes. I also heard that there is a lot more money to attain in this Avernum than there was in the last one, so that's good to note. Should be able to go a little buck wild on our skills and spells. Oh shit balls. Goblin warrior. Oh fuck, that's a lot of Nephilim. Fuck it, went in Rome. Yeah, that healed a lot. We'll take it. You missing now is not an option. guys Oh, 
Coming up quick on that next level. There's a lot of shit to explore here, a lot of shit to take in. Hello! Got us a little kitchen back here. I dig it. Get this room cleared. Pretty big fucking place here. Our first legit escapade into Avernum 2. And the immensity that is upon us. As you know from Avernum 1, these are not short games. We're looking at at least 60 hours here. Spiritist. Okay. So let's nuke that bitch. A fine cloak, you say? In this nook, you find a thin book on a pedestal. You flip through the thin pages, yellowed and stained with age. They're covered with strange symbols and seem to shift and blur before your eyes. You can't help but feel that the tome did something wonderful for you. You find it almost impossible to bring yourself to attack the book, but you finally manage. You shred the pages with your weapons. Soon it's destroyed. You gain XP. Yeah, I don't know. You get XP for destroying the motherfucker, though. I think it's 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 trying to trick you into not destroying it with the good feely feels. Wrap up here soon. Lamp! I like lamp! Where in the fuck are you going? We are leveling again, folks. It's a sin to level more than once in one video. We're 
going to do it. Oh shit. You confront the chief of this band in his chamber. He is older than you expected. An aging Nefar, hair growing gray, bearing a long lifetime's worth of scars and burned patches. You can easily imagine him remembering the days before the Empire scoured his kind from the surface. He calmly raises from the table, knowing that his time is rapidly drawing to a close. He draws his blade and says, I am Chief Shava, proudest of the Fangland. I face you now, at this end of days. What's a Fang Clan? Sounds gay. Fang Clan, proud clan. One of three great clans that remain. The few surface humans allowed to live. Ones the Empire come down to slay. It is the end. I demand that you yield. Shravel shakes his head. Why I die, you die. We all die. This is the end for all. The end? What do you mean? The Empire comes down, hunts, slays. The Empire always wins. This lesson we learned on surface, bought with rivers of Nephil and Nephar blood. Now their barriers split up the land. They box us in, kill in little groups. Better to die now than to have to see massacre. You know that the Empire made these barriers? No, I do not know. But they must have, yes? Who else in Underworld has such power? What is Nephar? Something about your question awakens a final moment of pride in him. We are stronger breed of Nephilim, huge mighty warriors, sterile, living only for the tribe, not for squealing kits, strong enough to rise, to lead. Then why'd you attack Fort Genric? If Fang Clan dies, we die as lords, owning land, not hiding from humans. If we must die, we must... This is how we choose. So what now? Now there is battle, nothing else. Choice is made. That's a waste. Can't we work together? Charles shakes his head. The Fang Clan meets. We talk. In our lives, we learn lessons of futility. We see the end. We meet it in the way we choose. If you win, I wish you good fortune, finding honorable death of your choice. Kill many Empire soldiers before you fall. Then he raises his blade and salutes you. He lets out a fierce war cry. His last and charges. I'm gonna kick you in the balls. Chief Sharva. Alright, well, you're, you're fixing to get fucked, Chief Sharva. Heal up both of my boys with that little hasty haste. Boy, didn't even get a fucking turn. Chief Sharver cries out for help. Why, yes! Anyway, come to me! The doom has come for us at last! This is a uh, cool little thing about Avernum is the bosses, they get stronger as you let them live longer. Chief Sharva falls, having found the honorable death he so craved. You, on the other hand, will actually fight on for survival. Sharva died with his honor intact, but living and trying to actually win also has its appeal. And we'll pick up 
got the Goblin Cleaver and another group heal. Wine is always good. Goblin Cleaver, plus one to lethal blow. 22 to 66. Not quite as strong as our weapon, but it has the lethal blow attack. Our swords do 22 to 88. Just having Lethal Blow alone is not quite what we're looking for, but we will throw that on Ron's stock. Be a nice dagger for him. Uh oh! Fuck me! This is the most luxurious room in the whole castle. The chief's bed, large enough for him and several of his mates, dominates the room. A thin layer of shedded nephil hair covers everything. He be banging up in here. Kind of proud of him. Yeah, we know the drill. Oh, we got fireball. Well, these things are super fucking strong right here. What the fuck, man? I can't even... I'm gonna have to come back to kill these up uh, motherfuckers here. That's okay. We will be back, but we're gonna continue just a bit more here. Beaker. I don't know if I need a beaker. Do we need a beaker? We do. We do need a beaker. Eventually. I'm gonna hang on to a beaker. We still see we have quite a bit of area to explore. The small jail where prisoners are briefly kept before their inevitable execution and devouring. The smell of rotten decay assaults your nostrils. It makes it very difficult to proceed. It's Aurum! A tired, bruised man wearing the tattered uniform of a soldier of Avernum slumps against the wall. He struggles to stand when he sees you. I am Aurum. Gods, I am glad to see you. Shall I be freed at last? How'd you get locked up in here? Graham and I were cut off from a patrol and captured. We have been prisoners for a while. Graham? He was in the next cell. He died two days ago, poor sod. We talked through the night. When he passed, I was on my own. I was ready to die too, but now at least I have hope. What do you got hope for? I'm not freeing you out. What do you think? Hope that I can escape. 
What do you and Graham talk about? Our lives, our dreams. Some strange glowing stone Graham found in his cell. What do we want to eat? When we turn to civilization, just passing the time and trying to stay sane. How'd you get locked up in here, Dingleberry? Graham and I were cut off from a patrol and captured. We've been prisoners for a while. Patrolling from where? Out in Fort Kenrick. That's where we were stationed. How long have you been a prisoner? I'm not sure how long the Nephilim have held us. It's hard to keep track of time in here, but now I might escape. Before I go, let me tell you about the password. Tell me the password. The kiddies brought me in through the back entrance. They didn't blindfold me too well, and I saw that they went through the gate. That opened when they said, Gath. That's the way I'm going to try to escape through. Interesting. That's the way I came in. I've slain the chief. Now I'm here to rescue you. He stands up. The news of his liberty has invigorated him. Thank you. He moves to the door. I will return to my brigade now. Well, what is left of it? Thank you my, for my life and for avenging the death of my friend. He looks out to make sure the coast is clear and he slips off into the shadows. And you get reputation and fucking experience, which is always the bizalls. But we need tools, tool use five to get in through there, which means we're going to need to tool use somebody. Who wants to be our tool use person? I don't know. We're going to think about that before the next video, though. Thank you all for watching. See you soon.